Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Art Smarts. This is our weekly series that's all about different aspects of the art business world and navigating through some of the trickier spots and offering recommendations for helpful products. This week we're going to talk inventory and this is probably one of the dreariest parts of being an artist is keeping track of what you make. However, it is probably one of the most important things that you can do to help yourself be successful. We are going to talk about a specific system today. It's called Artwork Archive. It is a cloud-based inventory management system. We'll get into a little bit more about what that means and some of the features for it. And uh, let's get started. So what is Artwork Archive? It is an online inventory management system. That's the simplest terms you can use to describe it. Um, it does so much more than that. In reality, it's a very complete tool for managing your art business. There are three types of accounts you can choose when you are selecting Artwork Archive. You can use it as an artist, as a collector, or as an organization. River Arts Inc. obviously uses it as an organization, but a lot of the tools and features that we're gonna talk about here apply to all three levels. The other thing to mention is that Artwork Archive has a substantial database of resources for artists. Even if you don't have an account, I highly suggest checking that out. I will link to that at the end of this video. So let's take a look at Artwork Archive. This is what it will look like when you pull it up. Um, they have a couple of different options here for us to look at. Um, this is sort of a screenshot of what a dashboard would look like, AKA your homepage when you log in. Um, we're gonna go over some of these features, but not all of them. Um, there's lots of different tools you can look at. Uh, we're gonna talk about reports, contacts, locations, and a couple other things as well. So you can do a free 30-day trial with Artwork Archive, just to play around and see if you like it. There's no credit card information required to do your trial, so it's a really no strings attached way to give it a test drive. That would be something I would recommend if you are interested. So like I said before, there's three types of plans you can choose with Artwork Archive. The most Probably most of the people listening to this are going to choose the artist option. River Arts Inc. has organizational. Um, a collector option would be if you are an art collector and you have a pretty substantial collection with a lot of different artists. This could be something for you to look at as well. For now, let's take a look at what it looks like as an artist. You will be able to enter your artwork one piece at a time and enter a lot of different information about it. It's kind of a central hub, just like this says. You'll be able to track where it goes, who's bought it, where it's been exhibited, how much it is, how big it is, lots and lots and lots of different details. Uh, a lot of our artists use this. We really, really recommend it. One other thing to note, they have a really, really helpful help center. They're really responsive. If you ever need to get a hold of them with a question, you can use this chat option. You can also send them an email or give them a call. I think their whole team is like six people. So you're guaranteed to get someone who knows what they're talking about and they answer your questions super quickly. So I'll go into pricing in a little bit, but first let's talk about some of um, the features that I want to go over for today. Here are my top five features of Artwork Archive. Cloud-based software. You can set locations for your artwork. Really powerful reporting. You can set up portfolios to send to potential galleries or clients. And really robust sales tracking. Let's see what these mean in a little bit more detail. So cloud-based, what does that mean? It means that it's accessible across multiple devices. So you don't have to have your one laptop be your inventory laptop. It's not a single file that's in one physical spot. It's a accessible across, you can have it up on your laptop and you could go into a gallery to meet with a potential client and pull it up on your phone. 
Um, it can go across different types of devices, Mac, PC, any kind of phone that can access the internet, you can access your inventory. So it's really flexible with that. That also means that your information is always backed up. So if something happens to the laptop that your file, your previous file of inventory was on, then you'd lose all that information. And that won't happen with the cloud-based. It is a secure stored solution that you can access from anywhere. So it makes flexibility a really big bonus of this. Locations. So I'll show you what this means in a second, but you can keep track of your artwork as it travels to different locations. You can set up these locations in your inventory management system. So let's say you entered a show uh, across the country. You could set that piece to be in an exhibition. Uh, if you have work in multiple galleries, you can keep track of what work is where and where it's been shown in the past. Or if it enters a private collection, you could enter that as a location. For things like temporary exhibitions, you can enter starting and ending dates so that it'll move back to its normal location without you having to do it. So it automates a lot of the process for you. Also, each location is stored with that piece. So you can look at it over time and see where that piece has gone and where it's been. Reporting. Reporting is probably the number one feature that people get out of our work archive. Like if you get nothing else out of it, reporting will change your life. <laughs> There's lots of different reports that you can generate from Artwork Archive. You can see a list of them there. The most common I would say are inventory reports, portfolios, and the Excel file. So I kind of I won't go into everything with reports. It's easiest just to uh, take a look with yourself and see what you like. Um, I'm going to go into more detail with portfolios on the next slide, but that's probably the number one that we use at the gallery. The important thing to note with all types of reports is that they are all shareable or downloadable, so you can send them different places. You can share a link, a private link with like a password. Let's say you want to send a, a grouping of images to a potential buyer. You can create an inventory report or a portfolio and send it to them so that only they can access it. Different things like that, lots of flexibility. And then the reports tab in Artwork Archive keeps a list of every report you've generated so that you can always go back to it and see it again later. And again, I'll show you what more reports look like in just a second. Specifically portfolios. This is going to be a really helpful report for you, especially if you are applying or sending new work to a gallery, or if you have a potential buyer and they want to just see some more options for you. You can choose how much information about each piece is displayed. It can be a single piece, or you can have a huge list of artworks that are available. The most common information that's included in a portfolio is the title, media, price, and size. There's lots more information you can include on that. That's just the most common set of four. So I'll show you what one of our portfolio pages look like here in a second. Sales is also a really important feature of Artwork Archive. Now it's important to note Artwork Archive does not, it's not a payment processing system. You cannot complete a sale or take a credit card over the, like, over the Artwork Archive. However, you can enter the sales you've made and keep track of it over time. So you can include the date, the buyer, the location where it was sold from. You can enter the total sale amount. And then if you have commission fees or taxes or anything that comes out of that, you can enter all that information and it'll break it down for you. You can download sales reports based on, I mean, a single date. You can see what sold this day. If you do like an art fair or something, you can see what did all sell this day. Or you can do it monthly if you want to check your books. Or you can see how much did I make in 2017. So there's really flexible reporting options for your sales as well. It's not 
quite my top five, I, but I would maybe call it number six, is there's a contacts feature in Artwork Archive. So you can store the contact information for all the important people in your business, your arts business. So things like buyers or galleries you've contacted, colleagues or other artists you've met or maybe want, want to collaborate with, prospects for potential buyers, um, really anything you want to enter in there if you want to store their contact information that keeps it right in the same spot so it didn't quite squeak into the top five but I would maybe call it a top six so let's go through some of the features that I was talking about here and I'll show you what it could look like so we are going to log into my artwork archive which might look slightly different from yours because remember I'm an organization and you would be an artist but let's take a quick little tour so here's the homepage that pulls up for me. There's a couple of different things to take note of. We have the organizational account, meaning we have an unlimited number of pieces. As a gallery that's been open for 10 years, supporting up about 40 artists at a time, we have 4,000 pieces in our collection right now. <laughs> you likely won't hit that amount for a really long time, but it's important to note there's an extremely large capacity because it is cloud-based. So you're not, you're not limited to a certain amount with the highest plan. Some of the artist plans that you can purchase will limit the number of pieces you have. So it's just up to you to decide how much capacity is worth it for you and what you might need. Um, yeah, there's 186 pages of artwork <laughs> on this page. Let's start with locations. This page is gonna look different to everybody. Right now, we have five locations for artwork that we could possibly have. Um, River Arts on Water Gallery, what's out and on display right now, what we have in storage. Sometimes we display things at the Chamber of Commerce. An artist can check back out the artwork or they can donate it to an auction, things like that. You as an artist might have 50 locations. It's kind of up to you. Every gallery you display at or a show you apply to or anything really. If you have multiple studios, you could decide what piece is where. But this is really a helpful option for you. Let's say you want to have a report. You could export all your locations and how many pieces are there um, into an Excel or a CSV file. So that's locations. Let's, I'll pull up an example piece for you. So here's an example piece for a, a location record that I wanted to show you. So this is a photograph by Bob Leggett. Um, so this is essentially the profile page for a single piece of artwork. You can see more details that we've entered about it, inventory number, all that kind of stuff. Um, Current location, it's out to artist. So Bob checked this out on October 1st, 2019. Um, you can see we had it in the gallery from April 26th to October 1st. And then he checked it out and it's currently in his possession. But if he were to bring it back, we could assign to a new location. We could say River Arts on Water Gallery as of today, April 29th. And then if we save that, it would bring up that it's now at River Arts on Water Gallery. And it automatically fills in some dates for you here, April 29th. So locations are a really powerful tool for organization. And that can help you keep on track if you have tons of pieces going in and out to different places. OK, let's talk reports. So you can get to reports. This left-hand side is your main navigation menu. If we click on the reports tab, you can see a list of all the reports that I have generated for I think a really long time. There's like 10 pages of it here. And you can kind of see the different types that we've used. The most common are inventory report for a specific artist or a portfolio page, things like that. So let's say I wanted to see, I'll pull up to this and I'll show you what it looks like. If I click this down arrow, you can view it, you can download the report, or you can copy the URL and share it. So lots of options for you in terms of reports. 
let me show you what this one looks like. So we have 72 works in this portfolio. We included the title, artist, media, size, inventory, and price. You might not need all that information, but that's what we chose for this option. And it just generates it in a really nice way for you. Let's say you want to generate a new report. So you click right here, new report, and then you select what kind you would like. Let's say I want a new portfolio. So let's say I want to do, you can call it whatever you want. Let's say I want paintings. If you choose to display the size, you can see if you wanted it inches or in inches and centimeters. You can even choose the type of font that the report generates with. You can include as much or as little contact information as you want to display. And then these are all the fields that you could include in your report if you wanted. So sometimes I include inventory numbers, sometimes I don't, depends on who we're sending it to. You can include size. You could, if it's a video or a performance piece, include duration. If you get your work appraised, you can include that in the portfolio. Lots of options for you here. And then from here, of our 4,000 pieces, if you happen to know the titles off the bat, you can type that. Otherwise, a really powerful tool is this filter. So you can filter by certain fields. So let's say the type of artwork I want is painting. That limits it to 400 pieces. <laughs> let's limit it to locations. Let's limit it to the paintings in the gallery right now. So we could select it and add it over. That would mean we have one piece in our report. So there's portfolio reports for you. Real quick, I'm going to glaze over what a sale would look like if you are marking things for sale in Artwork Archive. Again, something to note, Artwork Archive cannot take or process payments, so that's purely record keeping for you here. You'll have to have a separate system in place for taking payments. Say someone purchased this untitled piece by Rick Ross, um, you could hit here, register sale, and then you can choose how much should it sell for. If you're in a gallery and they had a, you know, a commission or something else, you could say how much you took net from it. If you had to pay sales taxes on it, you could record that. The sale date, anything else important to know about the sale, Maybe it sold at an art fair when you were here, or maybe you gave somebody a, a discount or something on it. That would be helpful to have here. You could then say where it sold from. This is helpful to look back. Let's say you want to see everything you sold at River Arts Gallery in 2019. You'd be able to pull that report later. So having a location that it sold from is very helpful. And then um, this is where the contacts part come in. You can say who it's sold to. And you can either create, you know, pull from your current contacts or you can create a new contact. And uh, if you save that, then that would go into your sales. So that's what that looks like. So you can see right here that Sparks and Embers by Lisa Binkley is marked as sold. So that's kind of what that looks like if you click on the piece, you can see the sale information. Now, as you look at my dashboard, you might be seeing this green public icon right here. In Artwork Archive, you can upload artworks that are only viewable to you. Now, as you look at my dashboard, you might be seeing this public icon right here. And something to note, Artwork Archive is a public facing art resource as well as inventory for artists. What that means is anyone can view artists and their work on Artwork Archive. And it's a really powerful marketing piece to be able to show your work and share that with the general public. 
but not everything you want to be put out there for people to see. So you can choose if a piece is public or private. So ideally a public piece will have a good image, very complete detailed information, sizes, prices, all that kind of stuff. And to see public pieces, my profile here, this is the information that will show to the public. So you can edit what all gets shown here. So we have our complete contact information here, things like that. I can edit what pieces are public versus private. So you can see over the course of 10 years, we've had 4,000 pieces, but right now only 565 of them are public. So, and you can change that by going piece by piece using this filter tool, things like that. If you want to see what your profile looks like to the public, you can click here, view profile. Here's what it looks like on the front end. So someone who is interested in viewing artwork that we have available can, this is just every piece we have, or they can filter it by artist. So these are the artists that we currently have, or by collection. So we have artists as a collection, but we also have things like cards, things like jewelry, things like sculpture, things like that. Or they can click to learn more about us as a gallery. So a public page is also a really cool tool that you can use for our work archive. There's lots more exploring you can do through this whole area. I encourage you to explore that further. Just a couple other things I want to chat about artwork archive here. Let's go back. I mentioned at the very beginning that artwork archive has a really robust resource and help center. And one of the best things that you should check out is what they call guides. Right up here, this resources section and guides. So they have some for collectors, but for artists, so they have these really, really handy guides, starting an art business, pricing your work, social media marketing, art inventory. This one in particular is really powerful. It's a list of artist grants and opportunities. Really, really great information on things for artists there. There's lots of different topics. This COVID-19 one has been really powerful. I highly suggest you look into that. And again, these are all accessible without any kind of account. So it's also just a really good resource for you as an artist to go to. Lastly, they have a really powerful help center as well. I think I mentioned before, they only have like eight employees. Um, so you will absolutely get a hold of someone who knows what they're talking about. They are super fast, super responsive. We've been working with Artwork Archive, I think since 2016 and they have been the best. We have absolutely no complaints. If you have any other any questions about Artwork Archive or wanna know more about a specific feature, please do let me know. I'd be happy to go through some things in more detail with you. Uh, you can also do a free demo with Artwork Archive themselves. They will show you around the website in much more detail than I was able to. You can also access a free 30-day trial Give it a test run. You don't need to provide your credit card. It's completely no strings attached. So give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Otherwise, happy archiving.